Alright, yo, what is up, guys? Codeware29 is back with a brand new video. Today, we are doing part 7, I believe it is. It's been quite a few parts. But part 7 to our beginner scripting series. Today, we're going to be going over properties. Now, I'm really excited about this. So, make sure you watch all the way to the end because these, these are so vital and you're not going to want to miss a single property. Alright? So, what are properties? Properties are like attributes, okay? Properties are the be uh, control the behavior of the things in our game. So, we can insert a part right here. I don't know if we went over this or not. Yes, we did. Sorry. Uh, we can click part right here. Hit F to focus on it. And we have this part, lovely part in our scene. But there's not a whole lot to it, right? This isn't exactly a game per se um, with just this one part. We want to make it uh, interesting. So the way you have properties open is you click up view and then properties. Make sure that that's clicked, okay? And then you'll have properties over here, maybe somewhere else on your screen. You can always drag it over here. Uh, I always like to have my properties right under my explorer on the right. So, um, we can, uh, one second. Okay, we can change properties in here. And this we'll go through some of these, not all of them, but the most important ones. So let's do a brick color first. Brick color, if you click on the color right there, or the word, you can change the color of the brick, which is perfect for games because games have a lot of color or you can click this little color icon right here and change it like that as long as you are have uh have this part highlighted but i think you should just stick with brick color right now because you can see what it looks like real time i'm gonna make this one a nice blue okay uh next is cast shadow i'm gonna go ahead and use the move tool right here i think we went over all these but i'm not positive you can click move and it gives you these arrows that you can use to move the part up. Watch very closely and see what happens when I turn on and off cast shadow. Did you see it? Off, on. If you guessed it makes a shadow when it's on, that's true. It does make a shadow whenever the cast shadow is on. If you don't want it to make a shadow, you turn it off. Uh, color is the same exact thing, but use brick color. Please just use brick, brick color for now. Maybe we'll get into RGB stuff. Red, green, blue is what this is um, later, but not right now. Okay, next is material. Material is really important because games also have materials as well, okay? So, w what if we click on this right here, and it brings up a whole drop-down. We can have so many different choices. We can change this to wood planks. Uh, we can change this to sand. That sand texture is really cool. I actually really like this. This is, a, I think, a newer-ish texture. No, it's not. Sorry. My bad. Um, we can do force field. I actually like force field. I hadn't seen this yet. Um until like last time I did I tried uh, I'm recording this a second time but yeah I like force field a lot but I'm gonna just stick with uh you can do whatever you want in here but I'm just gonna stick with plastic okay next is uh reflectance we're not gonna go over that next is transparency so if you click on that it'll bring you uh to this little spot you can use the slider to make it more and less transparent when it's all the way at one it's completely invisible and all the way at zero, it's completely visible, but it's still in the game when it's transparent. You just can't see it, okay? Next, we have the name. We can name this something like um, uh, Game Part. And then we can change its orientation. We won't go over that now. Next is the parent. So the parent is whatever it's inside of. We briefly talked about this, but this Game Part's parent is the workspace because that's what it's inside of, right? inside of the workspace you can change that by clicking this and parenting it to something else um, or just literally just dragging it okay but I'm gonna keep it in the workspace all right next uh, we have position we're not gonna go over that right now because that's uh, we may do uh, we'll probably do a C frame video in the series uh, but so we won't get into that right now next we have anchored anchored is so important I wish I would have known this um, as a beginner uh, so you're really lucky that you're learning this um, because when you check anchored what does it do? Well, let's click the little arrow under play and click run. As you'll notice, it's just a regular part. Okay? Sorry, I'm lagging a little bit. There we go. It's just a part. It's just stay staying there. But if we unanchor it, it falls. Okay? So that's what anchored does, is it keeps it up in the air. I wish I would have known this because I used to look in the toolbox for floating parts to keep things up. When really, it's just <laughs> like that. It's just with the anchored. So let's uh, kind of look at some cool physics here by scaling this part. Whoops. You can click the scale icon and you can scale it on these axes. Uh, axes. I think it's axes. Um, and then let's click the rotate tool and rotate it a little bit to the side. Oh, 
click Control or Command Z to undo something. Uh, that's looking pretty cool. And I'm, a, I'm actually going to leave it at that. And let's make this more of a square. Perfect. So now when we look and we play run, or when we run it, we have the physics of a normal cube. Whoop, I forgot to unanchor it. Physics of a normal cube. See that? That's pretty cool. Okay, next, uh, these next two are really important. One is, uh, sorry, not archivable. Can collide right here. Sorry, this next one is really important. Can collide. What does can collide do, you may ask? I'm going to uncheck anchored. Basically, if it's unchecked, you can walk through it. If it's checked, you can't walk through it, and it's solid. Um, this can be helpful if you're trying to make a door that just you walk right through. Um, and then lastly is locked uh, for right now. You click it, and now you can't click it in here. You have to go into the Explorer, and you click Game Part. This is important if you want to uh, drag over some things, but you don't want to include this part right here. Um, so we can, I'm going to unlock it because I don't want to do that. You can also just click this lock button right here, and uh, click it to lock it, click it again to unlock it, and click the lock button again when you're done. Perfect. Uh, last one, actually, sorry, um, is size. So size goes by three um, three numbers, the X, the Y, and the Z. If you want it to be a perfect square, uh, you, I'll do all the same number. I just often uh, will just use the scale tool, though. Okay, perfect. So those are the properties, but how do you change that in script? Now, this is something that's going to be super important. So let's get right into it. I'm going to insert a script into the game part. We don't have to have all the scripts inside of here, okay? But um, for this one, we're going to put in the game part, and we'll just call this uh, property script, okay? So we can just say wait uh, five. Maybe we want to wait five seconds before we start. And then we can just say, um, uh, well, first, before we say wait five, we can put this uh, game part inside of a variable by saying local uh game part equals script. Whenever we uh, say script inside of a script, it means the script we're inside of. And we can say just script.parent, that's whatever the script is inside of. So we're just saying, whenever we say game part, now it knows it's the script's parent, which is game part. So we can just say uh, game part uh, dot, and then we, we're gonna wanna change its color. That's just something I wanna do really quickly. So we can just say dot brick color equals and we can't just write blue like that, right? We have to say brick color dot new parentheses, quotation marks, and then your color. And it has to be here. It's really, that's why you want to eventually learn RGB, red, red green, blue. But for now, um, just remember whenever you change the brick color, you have to say brick color dot new and then have parentheses, quotation marks, and choose the color. Perfect. Next, whoops. This is not supposed to be here. Uh, okay, next we can just say wait three seconds, and then we're gonna say game part um, dot brick color equals brick color dot random. So that's another thing we can do. It's dot random then parentheses and it just picks a random color. So now let's go ahead and run this, and you'll notice that after five seconds uh, of the game running, the brick will change color. Uh, oop! I have it on can collide. Remember we said that uh, can collide, it means you can go through it. Make sure to have that checked if you have it unanchored. Okay, so now it falls and it changes to red and it'll change to black because it just chose a random color and that's what it chose. So perfect, now let's change some other properties. So this is how you change properties. We can say game part uh, dot, uh, let's just change its you can do material. If you do material, though, uh, you're going to need uh, quotation marks and then um, the material you want. But I'm just going to say wait three, and then we're going to say um, brick, uh, no, 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 game part uh, dot mm, transparency equals one. So that's going to make it completely transparent. We'll wait three again, and we'll say whoop, game part, whoop. Game part dot transparency equals zero. So this is changing the transparency and saying we're going to make it completely invisible by saying transparency equals one, and then completely visible again by saying transparency equals zero. And oh, it chose an orange this time for the random. 
and it's going to make it completely invisible. It's still there, and then it's going to make it completely visible again. All right, so that's looking pretty nice. Uh, let's now change its name because we're going to use this later in programming. We can say wait three, and we can just say game part dot name uh, name equals game part new name. It does not matter what you oh wow uh, what you change it to. It will change it as long as you have parentheses because name is a string, a name. Okay, we can wait three again. And let's just make it can collide uh, false. Okay, we can just say game part dot can collide uh, can collide equals false. So it's gonna fall through the ground because we don't have it anchored because it's just gonna go through anything. It doesn't have physics anymore at that point. So it's gonna fall. It's gonna change to red. It's gonna change to a random color. It's gonna go invisible, and then it's gonna go visible again, and then it's gonna fall through the ground. Oh, sorry about that. Um, oh, it's there. It is, and it's gonna fall through the ground. Oh, ah, game part new name. I forgot we changed its name, right? And it fell all the way through until it was out of the scene, and it had to be destroyed because it had to be destroyed because it was too far down. So that's how you change properties. But how do you change it? through a different script. Maybe you want to put it in server script service. So let's enter the script into server script service. And let's name this script something like uh, property script two, okay? And inside of property script two, we can just say, uh, we can say local game part equals, and then we'll just find our game part by saying game, right? dot workspace because we're saying inside of our game inside of the workspace dot game part inside of the workspace we find our game part we can just say wait maybe we want to wait 15 and then we'll change its color we can say game part dot brick color equals brick color dot random so now if we play the game after 15 seconds it will change its color to a random color again through this script, okay? It's also gonna change to a random color from our other script, so it's gonna change to a random color twice. As soon as my computer uh, is willing to cooperate, there we go. Oh, it waited so long that it just did everything. All right, so it changed to blue uh, and then a gold color. And that's just the random color it gave us. So those are properties. Feel free to play around with them. You can make obbies with these. Like maybe you want one of these parts right here. We can move it. Maybe you want one of these parts to be one that they fall if the player steps on it. Where do you use that? Where do you do that? Hit anchored and hit can collide. Another way to anchor it is by clicking it and then hitting anchor, okay? One more thing I want to get over, uh, go over really quick is making groups, and uh, you do that by just dragging over what you want, or you can go over to the Explorer, hold Shift, and click both things, and then hit Control or Command G to group together, and then it creates a model, and you can name this model uh, Stepping Stones, whatever you want to name it, and then you can uh, when you drag one of them, it drags everything there. So I'm in a little lag right now, so I'm going to sign off now because that was the end of the episode. If you liked it, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It helps my channel grow. Thank you for almost hitting 2,000 subscribers as of the time I'm recording this. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, like I said, subscribe, and uh, we will be back soon for part 8. Wow, that's awesome. So all, also, we have a code for 29 shirt on roblox.com. Click the link in the description and join my group. Link will also be in the description. Signing off for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.